Hello everyone, welcome to How to Draw Your Dragon. This time we are going to learn how to draw scales. Scales are not really complicated, the only thing they are is repetitive and, well, it takes a lot of patience to draw them because there are many. And I made a little dragon here, it has scales ex example here. These are like the, the usual scales I draw on dragons. They have um, like a square shape with rounded edges. But as you can see and you can copy, you probably won't know why I did them the way I did them unless you Google some scales. So I got scales for you. And as you can see, these ones have a triangle shape. They go like this. Wait a second, I cannot draw with white. They are something like this. And they overlap each other like this. What I would recommend for you to do, as I have done in the other videos, is to trace over the picture. Because it will make, the, make it easier for you to understand the shape and the, the direction of the scales. In this example we have rows of different sized scales. And if you were to make it into the basic shape, it would probably look something like this. Let me erase this. It would probably look like this, like you have rows of, of the scales, right? And then you have the scales overlapping each other in simple triangle forms. Try to, try to make them as simple as you can as a sketch first because after the sketch will come the refining and what do I mean when I say refining? Well, this, let's see. You can lower the opacity or whatever it is you have on it. And we'll try to draw over it this time, paying close attention to the details on the scales. For example, this one has a bump here and a little ridge going upwards. Here, and you see, like it has a specific shape, and the further they go, they kind of flatten out. They, they become something like this instead of a square. And I'll try to copy what you see first. And the same with this example, try to create what you see. Drawing rows of things is really helpful. Because you can, well, you can see the shapes better. Like if you want to make a big row that fits many scales, you have to watch for this. Like, look at this. This one has bigger spaced out rows of scales. In the top part of the scales, there's like a big, a big chunk of scales that you can see here. Then there's a rounded one. And then there's like three tiny scales and two scales and so on. The, the part of observation is truly important in making scales because it will show you the density of the skin of the animal. This is an alligator and this is perhaps the leg of a reptile or a snake and this is the body of fish. But you get what I mean, like try to, to reference as close as you can I'm never getting tired of saying this, reference is the only way you can actually draw something. Because it's real and you can observe it. If you try to grab it from your imagination, it might work only after you have referenced enough and learned from it. So, I would really recommend you do that. Always recommend to, to reference things. Like, you really don't know how fast you can improve with this. It's incredible. So, you get what I mean, right? With each of these examples, I'm just trying to show you what I do when I reference scales. And that's just for, I don't know, different kinds of, of dragons I draw. But there are so many kinds of scales, and I wanted to show you some, well, little examples, aside from the ones we just did, that look quite similar but in a different way like try to draw 
the neck or the body of a dragon. Let's try a tube. This is just a tube as an example. Okay, you don't have to draw the exact same tube or the exact same shape. Just, I don't know, try to create your own fairy tube, yay. So this would be the dragon's neck, where you will have, I don't know, the head, or maybe the muscles are not like exactly bigger, but this is just for an example, okay? You can go ahead and label that layer as neck, or as tube, or as whatever you chose, and create a new layer underneath, or on top, if you're drawing with pencil, you can just do it with pencil. There's no need to, to make like, a different thing. But we can go first with different examples. Like for example, the, the arch scales. You have rows of scales that go like this. They go thicker in the top. The closer you get to this part, you have to make them smaller. But for example, as you have the, the arches here, in the middle of these, you have to create another scale. And maybe do like that, and like that, and so on, until you cover this area. The closer you go here, they will become smaller. Yeah? And the same goes here. You're gonna make the rows like this. Try to make them with, like, well, making sense smaller and so on and smaller and smaller and you get the point that's like the rounded kind of scale goes like this this pattern just repeats itself but there's no point in drawing this pattern like like this and repeating it and repeating it no you have to think about what you're doing for example, this is a cylinder, it's a rounded shape, so you probably will have smaller scales as they approach this part, this will be smaller, and bigger the closer they are here, and smaller here, and yeah, you get it again, it's the same thing. So this is just one kind of pattern, we can label that pattern 1. And again, if you're in traditional media, don't worry about that. Then over again, we're gonna do a different pattern. This time it's going to be something more similar to probably a snake, I think. You can try the different scales, but this one might not be really a scale, but it's like a, a, a hexagonal thing, like a shape like this. So again, it's the same principle, like you have your rows, and you can start making your shapes smaller and bigger next to the, the other ones. Like you make a big one and then you just surround it with a smaller pattern. It's like a turtle back or something. Yeah, the same here. It doesn't matter if it's not like perfectly symmetric or, or something like that because scales are not that symmetrical when they're in this shape. So don't trouble yourself with making it look perfect, because it won't. Remember that the, the small ones follow the shape of the neck. You're not, you're not gonna draw this right, so try to like make sense with it. Yay! Okay, so this is just another example, and we can label that pattern too. If you're using Photoshop, which I can give you lessons on that later, you just label the different um, layers and hide them and create a new one. It's so fun. Okay, now grab a different color, and this time we're going to make a different kind of, of scale pattern that's a flat um, scale pattern. For example, this could go like a little bit here, and you can make little triangle shapes. You'll see why. When, where this connects, where this little point connects, where this connects, you will make uh, a line, a curved line. You see? It looks really pretty. And, for example, I've made this looking that way, that way. 
But as the neck is going down, and that's also another recommendation, is that you look at the shape of the neck and the direction of it. If it's going down, it has to go this way. Like a smile. Yeah. It makes sense once you learn anatomy, if you don't you just pay attention to why. For example, you go like this, you make it go downwards, like, like you're smiling, like this. Mm -hmm. And, well, this is just the same thing, imagine a line here. It's curving, so it, it goes smaller here, bigger here because of the perspective and perspective is really helpful please don't ignore it because it's going to help you control so many things like just figure draw things like try to triangles try circles try squares like it's so simple once you figure out that this could be just a, a shape a similar shape remember where the thing ends when the triangle ends you just draw a smile smiley scales Simplified, but you get the point is just to to show you Fast way of drawing scales, and that's another pattern we can call pattern three We're getting the hang of it Okay, so this new pattern will be orange It's similar to the other one and it's the one I adore. I really simply adore this thing Try to make like the neck a pointy scale try to figure like a um, Let's try a, a rectangle with a rounded edge and a spiky corner. Yeah? Draw your rectangle, round it, has a butt, and now it has a nose. So this is the same thing here with the scales. Round, pointy, round and pointy, pointy and round. You just go round and round. It's the same thing. Now you have this, and you just make figures that look like this, but in small, tiny shapes that go next to these scales. It varies in shape, it doesn't have to look the same. Just do that. And then here, you just go and draw this, something like this. You can really vary. You can mix up different kinds of scales. And what do you do here, you wonder? You do the same. The closer together, the better it will look because dragons have close scales. So, like that. You get it like different kinds of scales, and you can just play around with it. It's not the law. What I'm saying is not what you have to do, it's just an idea. This could be pattern number four. And it looks pretty, I think. It looks, it's, I think that's the best pattern there is. But that's just my opinion. So, make your own. And be happy with your pattern. So this one, it's more like a crocodile kind of pattern. It's also fun to draw, but you have to separate it. So try making rows on the neck or on the tube thing you're drawing. Just a tube neck, whatever. And then try to have your your rows to separate them. And you're just going to make squares, which makes it simple. Like try to you will grab onto the idea once I show you. Like squares, squares, square. and then you make smaller, smaller squares like this, or rectangles. These are not squares; these are rectangles. But whatever, you get the point. Like the small size fits here. You're going to fit fit in the thing here. Now you're you're getting the point around, right? Like, yeah, like that. That that's the point of of this thing. Like try to separate them, make a grid, if you will. It's a grid. And just fit the scale on it. Like make it, I don't know, a rounded square thing. And it's the same thing here. You don't even need the grid anymore once you get the hang of it. And that's like a crocodile skin, a Godzilla kind of thing. Very thick and strong. And I really like that one too. So this is a pattern number five. Yay, we have five patterns now. And for the last things I wanted to show you is perhaps the plates on the neck of a dragon. You can make the neck a little lighter, so you can draw on top of it with no problem. 
And there goes something that's fun. Try to figure out that the neck goes like this, right? So you can make lines as simple as this and plate them over. Ta da! Yay! Plated neck, see? Now you can have like a different line and details and, and whatnot. Like that's one kind of neck. The other kind of neck is like like simple snake thing. They go closer together. Most cartoon dragons have this, I think. Yeah, that's a different um, kind of neck. You can pause the video to watch it, but I'm just gonna keep drawing. So you can also have the square plates, thick, bulgy. Also, some dragons have this. Like, there's so many kinds of scales. Really, so many. It's impossible to draw them all. But what I would recommend for you to do is just Google them. Like, literally grab pictures of scales of animals and have fun with those things. Because they look pretty once you have them in color. As you can see here. Now I cannot find my head. Where's my head? No. No. Mm. Well, I lost my head. Haha. <laughs> but no. So now, now that you have an idea of what to draw and how to do scales go ahead draw your dragon and be brave with them okay and just a few tips I have for example if you have a big dragon facing like I don't know you have the head of a dragon and he's close up and you're making a comic or, or a picture or whatever this is your drawing this is your dragon you could have scales and look really good even in the head the face you can make them in their heads, like, like, I don't know. You can make their scales here, and around the nose, and add many, many tiny details around the eyes. Like, you can do that as long as it's in a close-up, or it's a big picture, because it will look great, and people will, will ad admire your handiwork when you do scales up close. And I will show you some artists that I've already shown you before in the description below that draw really pretty scales one of them I already mentioned, Sky Sealer the other one is Shinurai I'll show them to you really cool people and, well, this is a close-up of your dragon as long as it's close, as long as you have a full body animal in a big picture that you can zoom in and look at all the scales that looks great but when you're doing a picture and I don't know you have a tree a blah, 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 and then you have your little tiny dragon almost in the f background like not here but in the background and you try to draw scales on that it will look really cluttered so think about adding scales as they're useful not just because they look pretty because if you're making scales in something that looks so small not only would you get tired drawing something that nobody will look at but it will look really busy and then you'll lose detail instead of having more okay so that's like the recommendation for today and go and google these beautiful people she is awesome she can draw scales Look for her in Deviant Art. Okay. Awesome. Wait. I don't think it's with a Y. I think it's with an I. And I can just erase this one. Why am I drawing on top of it? Sorry, Shin. There you go. ta -da! It's with an I, I think. Shin or I with a Y. It's a motorcycle. Hmm. Hmm. No. No. This one. This one. This one. With an I. Go Google her. Amazing art, amazing dragons, been my inspiration for so long. Just a shout out. Go Google her. And that's all for now, guys. I really hope it helped you. And go Google some scales and replicate them. That's your homework, okay? So thank you for watching. And please, my dear friends, subscribe because I really need your help with this. I want my tutorials to, to be shown to many people so I can help them. Because I always wanted to have something like this when I was growing up and growing, so... Now that it's there, please subscribe! I'm really thankful for that. And for comments, and for anything you want, suggestions, and anything else. So thank you!
thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.